men yes. in the lower parts of the wall. Watch it. That means the trenches. Yes, sir. As we deputize our people yeah. to go into the community. And then he says, fight for your brother. Yes. Fight for your son. Okay, God bless you. Thank you so much. Uh, my name is Ira Ackery. I pastor the Greater St. John Bible Church, and I'm a, uh, part of this coalition of faith leaders throughout Chicago land. Uh, faith, leaders, faith leaders from all four corners of the city um, have met here today. Uh, some have left, unfortunately, but we still have a remnant of our supporters here. Faith leaders um, from Little Village to Lincoln Park, from Austin to Auburn Gresham, we are here today. This day is uh, bittersweet to some degree. Uh, sweet part is Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. on this day 49 years ago delivered the famous I Have a Dream speech that gave so much hope to America, gave promise to America and gave challenges to our nation. Also, it's the 57th anniversary or the commemoration of the death of Emmett Till and, and Rolanda Marshall, a young lady in our community, uh, died 19 years ago because of senseless gun violence. We, we, are, we are gonna move forward. We have people from all faiths here today. Uh, we're grateful for their presence. And it's, it's, this is a major, major day because uh, faith leaders are doing more uh, than just stand inside of temples, mosques, and synagogues. When we look at Moses, Moses did more than just pray. Amen. <laughs> Moses, oh yeah, that's right. Moses not only prayed, but he also, yes. he had a plan and he had a policy. We're standing here together from different faith groups and denominations saying that we have a policy and we're here to fight back. It's going to be a long journey, but we will win in the end. We will pass this bill. We will get the ban on assault weapons. We will get the We will get the We will get the citizens. We will stand together to conquer the land. We're going to bring the remarks and prayer one of the leaders of the great churches here in our city. Reverend Joy Rogers is going to come with, with the statement and open prayer, followed by the objective by Pastor Marshall Hatch. Then Mark Walsh is going to come from the Illinois Council against handgun violence. Susan Susan Johnson from Hyde Park is going to come. And at that point, we, we're going to allow a couple responses from victims. I'll come back at that point. Thank you. I'm Joy Rogers. I am the Dean of the Cathedral of St. James here in Chicago. And I speak today on behalf of the people of St. James, probably a thousand petitions signed. Uh, I'm the Bishop of the Episcopal Diocese of Chicago, Jeffrey Lee. I am here today because I'm angry. Mostly I'm angry at myself and how easy it is to become numb, to feel helpless and hopeless at the truth that we live in a city whose streets are awash in blood and bullets. Yes. And you know what, all my life I've been told, oh joy, no one likes an angry woman. <laughs> and then I did community organizing training and the trainer Amen. said to me, oh, oh, anger, it's a good thing. You're angry, be angry because the world is not working the way it is supposed to work for too many human beings. You should be angry. But now turn that anger into action. Turn it into power that connects power to forge partnerships, relationships, yes. friendships, power, connections, to make the difference, to be 
the difference, to live the difference, my friend, not to avenge the dead, those precious ones are in the hands of their Lord, but to arouse the living, to change the terms by which we will all live together in this city. You, you all, are the people who are helping me turn my anger to action. 100,000 signatures. Oh, I think that's eminently doable. You know God cares, yes, he does. but God calls. That's right. And it's the call today that you and I are, um, are going to answer together. 100,000 uh, signatures for this petition. Let us pray. Lord, have mercy for all children at risk in our city, in our world, for all who mourn that they may be comforted by your promises, for all who are afraid that they may be protected by your presence, for hope of peace in violent times, for hope of justice in a violent world, for hope of abundant life in the face of a culture of guns and death that together we may be instruments of your redeeming love to our city and to our children. Oh, we pray to you, O oh Lord, and all God's people say, Amen. 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 Thank you so much. My pleasure. Thank you, Pastor Jordan. And again, we are grateful for this privilege on this sacred day in this holy place. As we commemorate again the 49th anniversary of Dr. King's I Have a Dream speech, which of course talked about equal opportunity and justice for everyone. We're here today because the number one plague in our communities, the number one plague in America is the plague of violence. We not only use guns in America, but we love and trust them. Wow. And because we have misplaced God with guns, we reap what we sow. But our purpose is to sow differently. Jesus said, blessed are the peacemakers, and they shall be called the children of God. And so we decree and declare it is absolutely unacceptable that 100,000 people are victims of gun violence in America every year. 100,000. Because 50,000 people approximately lose their lives in a given year on the highways of America. All of us, because there was a change in the law, we now buckle up and put on seat belts. You cannot drive an automobile and be, be irresponsible with it. If it's stolen, you have to report it. You have to have license plates and tags that point back to your responsibility for this vehicle. Well, if we do it for automobiles, we can do the same thing for guns that kill 100,000. very clear on our use of language, these are sensible measures, mm -hmm. sensible measures that have anything to do with taking away anybody's Second Amendment right to protect their home, mm -hmm. to protect their castle, to protect their family, mm -hmm. if what they, that's what they choose to do. Mm -hmm. But no citizen has a right to have a military assault weapon right. in their home Amen. that is designed right for mass killings of people. Well, Nobody has that right in America. Right. And so our, we stand here today, again, a beautiful bouquet of humanity. Mm -hmm. Today we are de-racializing this issue. Amen. And we're declaring that violence is not a black problem. Right. Right. It's not a white problem. Right. Right. It's not a Hispanic problem. Right. It's not an Asian problem. Yeah. Yeah. It's not a male problem. Right. It's not a female problem. Yeah. Yeah. It's not a gay problem. Yeah. It's not a West Side problem. Yeah. Yeah. It's not a South Side problem. Yeah. Right. It's not a North Side problem. Right. 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 It's not a Baptist problem. Yeah. It's not a Catholic problem. Yeah. It's not a Jew problem. of military assault weapons. We 
We stand with one voice. We stand with one challenge. One person can make a difference. Especially when you put the ones together. Yeah. Right. I almost feel a little churchy in my clothes. Here. <laughs> That's somebody to tell me one person can make a difference. You know, today we gather together, but once we come together and once we have 1,000 signatures, politicians will beat down to the doors of the people and ask us what we want. All right. And when they ask us what we want, we want House Bill 5831 to pass. Right. We want to reinstate the ban on assault weapons. We want peace in the land. We want peace in the streets of Chicago. With, uh, of course, enough, uh, our hearts are touched enough with those who've lost their lives. Amen. And so in their honor, and particularly many of us were moved by baby Heaven Sutton. Amen. In her honor. Mm -hmm. In her honor. Amen. And in the honor of countless children and people, victims all across the city and the country, this will be done. Yes. We shall. Michelle. Come over. That's right. <laughs> and make sure that this is done. God bless you. Thank you very much. Those other ministers, you want to come forward. We got media here. They need to know that, that you all are with us. You know, they always short changes on our numbers. They always say, oh, 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 a couple dozen ministers met. A couple dozen rabbis met. A couple dozen priests met. We've already lost a uh, few that had to go to meetings, another 10 to 15, and so we need you all guys to come on up. Amen. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. I'm Mark Walsh with the Illinois Council Against Handgun Violence. I'm honored to stand here today behind these leaders of the faith community from across Chicago as we undertake this endeavor. It's, as other speakers have pointed out, on the 49th anniversary of the historic I Have a Dream speech, one thing that we all know from that movement was that it was not just Dr. King, and it was not just one denomination, but it was a coming together of faith communities across this country for doing what's right and what is morally honorable, and we need to do that. And that's no different than what we're doing here today. These weapons of mass destruction are right here. Right in our communities yes. and are killing future generations. Yes. Coming together, we will pass these bills, reinstate the ban on assault weapons, and help protect the lives of our communities. So thank you very much. Susan Johnson with Hyde Park Union Church and Chicago Citizens for Change. The statistics are stunning and appalling. The level of violence against children and youth is so disproportionately high in Chicago that the statistics are almost unfathomable. In the last five school years, Chicago has lost over 1,300 children and youth to violence, 594 under the age of 20, 110 of whom were under the age of 15 and another 731 youth 26 years old and under. For every child or youth killed in violence in Chicago, nearly 10 times that number are injured, many of them seriously, though they live, some with permanent disability. During this same time period, five years, some have been injured more than once. Mm -hmm. The same surgeon often operating on the same child again. That's right, that's right. If we think of these losses only from the perspective of the medical costs incurred, it would radically reduce our municipal debt to work on prevention of violence. There are, of course, many other crucial measures of the long-term effect of this level of violence against our city's children and youth, among them the effects on surviving family members in the aftermath of a child or youth homicide, Waves of complicated grief engulf families, wash over neighborhoods in our cities, swamp our local public schools, mental anguish, physical illness, including levels of post-traumatic stress disorder right. that rival any declared war, mm -hmm. depression, 
financial instability, job loss, housing instability, education deferred, education derailed, futures extinguished. We are only beginning to measure the real impact of violence and how violence against children and youth is perpetuated in a cycle of violence. The ongoing, reverberating impact of violence on whole families, on community efficacy, on economic development, and yet we already understand that the unmitigated aftermath of violence against children and youth perpetuates cycles of violence in our communities. There is hope, yes. but there is no immunity. In Chicago, the overwhelming majority of the children and youth who are victims of violence are Hispanic and African American, but let's get this right. There is no neighborhood free from violence. There is no hour of the day or night free from violence. There is no perfect or good enough parenting that protects a child from violence. Mm -hmm. There is no family income that makes a child immune. There is no education. There is no career path. And because there is no immunization against violence, we must work together to prevent it. Mm -hmm. Gun registration and an assault weapons ban are key prevention measures. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Amen. Mm -hmm. of a uh, young lady, Rolanda Marshall, who was got down 19 years ago on this day. Thank you. Uh, when we go outside, we're going to have a balloon lunch. I have 14 purple balloons, which represent the years that Rolanda was on this earth. That was her favorite color, and that was the poem I read you. And usually when you see me, I'll always have on something purple. I wear it in honor of her. I have some blue balloons, and I want Willie William to take one, because he lost his son. Yes. Uh, Marsha Lee to take her son. She lost her son, Thomas Lee, out in Harvey, Illinois. How many years ago? Four. Four years ago. And Willie's son was killed at a Fort uh, Theater six years ago? Yes. Six years ago. Willie William Ju Junior the third, right? Third. third. So I want each one of you to take a balloon, uh, a, yellow, a, a, blue, a blue balloon, and also I have a pink balloon. This pink balloon represents Siobhan Dean. She was killed in Roseland in 1992, which was 18 years ago. And that represents her, because I've been in contact with her mother ever since then, because my other daughter was killed on the same day, about a year apart. And she was killed in Rosalind by Yami Sanford, Sanford, if you all remember that case. So that pink balloon will represent Siobhan Dean. And I just want to say, yes, we do need to get this assault weapon ban revived. We need to get the House bill passed. We need to do all we can do, anything that we can do to save children. Because I will tell you, it has been hard for me and my family. But we have prevailed because of God's healing power. Mm -hmm. Because of God's healing power. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And because of things that I was taught by my parents mm -hmm. and the prayers that have went up and in which it will continue to go up. Mm -hmm. And I can just say I've been banging this drum for 19 years. I'm just glad somebody has finally listened. <laughs> They're doing something yeah. because they told me, oh, you crazy, you know, you can't pick up your life. Like, you can't do this, you can't do that. I cannot believe that because I know that they are good people. They are good people. I don't believe in what the Bible says in order for evil to persist. All it takes is good men not to do anything, or a good woman not to do anything. And it says, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray, and then seek my face, and then I will come down from heaven and heal your land. Thank you very much. And I will see you outside for the balloon run. And we gotta go, I gotta go to work. I'm a caregiver, I take care of elderly people. And they be saying like, my angel is coming today, so the angel have to show up today. All right. Pastor <laughs> Schneider and Dr. Marcinia Richards, uh, they're going to come. OK. 
Okay, and then that the ecumenical prayers, brief ecumenical prayers by President Dr. Turner, mm -hmm. Pastor Jose Lambertin, <clears throat> and Darius Randall. Thank you so much. It's very simple. We are here today to ask you to participate with us in getting the ban reinstated for assault weapons. You can go to www.passthebill.us to sign the petition. It's very easy. It's just one click away. www.passthebill.us. We do need volunteers. We're asking you to volunteer to help us to obtain these 100,000 signatures. Again, it's www.us pass the bill, www.passthebill.us. You can also call 312-675-2570. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. As Dr. Richards mentioned, our purpose here today is to launch this petition drive with 58% of the guns recovered in crime in the state of Illinois coming right from the state of Illinois. With 28% increase of homicide in this city since last year, there's no time that can be waiting to start what we have to do right now to get guns and easy access to guns off our streets and off the hands of those who are shooting. As I mentioned earlier, it's not just guns killing people, it's people with guns. And we have to take the guns out of hands of people who should not have and have no responsibility for it. We are here today to engage this petition drive by engaging the faith community, the sleeping giant in this city that is about to wake up and rise up and be the vocal giant in this city to get pressure on legislators from Springfield to Chicago to say it's time. It's time. We are tired of this praying faith without works and still dead. We are now rising up from our pews, going out our doors, and we're getting petitions signed across the city and across the state. We want to understand we are going to educate our members about the lies the NRA has told them that these petition drivers and these bills are to try to take guns out of people. No, these bills are to make people responsible for guns.
manifesting ourselves for life. And this day, we have declared that it's a beginning of a big victory that we are all going to achieve together with the will of God, because God is with us and we will overcome. Right. We will not allow no longer our children to be killed in our neighborhoods. Mm. Yes. Right. Mm. Because as a pastor, if this continues happening, I am a failure. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Wow. Because God has told me, has told what everyone who we are in the ministry, we are the boys for those with our boys. Right. And I am here with my amigo Paco from Little Village and all the pastors, Latinos, that we are getting a big lesson today. One, that we need to start to work in our neighborhood in our Latino communities and not just only praying, but bringing the dream that Dr. Martin Luther King Amen. gave it to us and also Amen. this man who brought out the Holy Spirit that doesn't have a color. The Holy Spirit is the message of peace, justice, and love. This man is an agitator when his name was Jesus Christ. Amen. Yes, sir. And he fights until the end. And this is the message that we get that if we get the, we have the Holy Spirit, we're gonna fight to the end to save our families in our neighborhood from the north side to the south side, the whole state of Illinois, and we're gonna have this legislation, and we gonna we're not gonna longer have in our neighborhoods that are killing our children. So I want to share with my friend Paco and we conclude. We represent a God who didn't send a text from heaven. All right. We represent a God who didn't just Facebook from heaven to the angels. We represent a God who came into flesh into our world. Yes. The Bible says that he he tabernacled himself among us. Yes, yes, and he walked down the streets. And our call is a united call to the city of Chicago, to all men and women who believe with their hearts in a supernatural, powerful, all-loving God, saying, do not stay within the safety of your church building. Yes. Now walk down the streets, represent the Jesus who walked down the neighborhood. This is our God, and this is our call. And so we are saying it together. In right. Jesus' name, uh, Father uh, Landa Verde reminded us, Archbishop Romero's call from El Salvador saying, yes. stop the violence in the name of God. So again, we say, Amen. enough, and we say, stop in the name of God. Amen. Every heart, leader, and pastor, and clergy, bow our heads in prayer. As we mark the anniversaries of Emmett Till, of Dr. King when he had a dream one night, and of Barack Obama when he accepted the Democratic National nomination. We are reminded that we will not forget the sheroes and heroes with shoulders we stand upon today. We will not forget the fact that we marched and we was, was bit on by dogs, my ancestors was, and we were called the N-word and so many other words. We were oppressed and, and the sad mistake is that we're still oppressed in a nation that is infatuated with guns, in a nation that turns its back on our children, and in a nation where legislators used to stand up for the people, but they only stand up for themselves. God, we call upon you today in a land of hopelessness and despair. We call upon you today and we ask you to sing your power. Yes, yes. Yes, 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 yes. 
Send your power and touch this united body. Yes, Lord. It is Dr. King that said, we come and we believe that the bank of justice is not bankrupt. That's right. That's right. But we believe that the, the bank of justice shall bring justice. For no lie can't live forever. For truth shall rise up once again. And God, we believe you and trust you. Yes, yes. And God, we, we believe that it's going to turn around the plague and the ills of our cities around the country. Yes, Lord Jesus. That 350 people killed anywhere is acceptable. Yes, sir. And we will not stand for it. Yes, no way in hell can we stand for it. Out of all these preachers in the city of Chicago, there ought to be more standing up against violence. My Lord, my Lord, my Lord. For Dr. King also said, And thank you for the elders, for they know the way. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.